there's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Time again for the Underdog Show, starring that champion of champions, Underdog. It was a dark, moonless night. The city was quiet. Then, suddenly, the darkness was split by a blinding electric flash, and the quiet was shattered by a terrifying electric crackle. On and on it continued. The night lit up by pulsating light and crackling sounds as if a giant firefly had come to life. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, it ended. Police cars, fire engines, trucks with giant searchlights all rushed to the scene, and the darkness of the night was penetrated to reveal a message. A message burned into the side of the steel building. Look at the message. To underdog, a rhyme in time saves nine. What does it mean? What did it mean? And who could have burned a message into steel? Down at police headquarters, Sweet Polly Purebred, ace TV reporter, asked that same question. Who could it be? Ah, uh, sure as me name is Flim Flanagan, this could be the work of only one person. Who, Flim? Only one of the vilest villains of them all. But who? None other than Slippery Eel. Slippery Eel? Slippery Eel? Who's he? Well, it began a few weeks ago. Slippery Eel and his boys were about to make off with an armored car. Look out, Eel. It's Underdog. Underdog, huh? <laughs> well, watch this. The bullets are bouncing right off him, Eel. Okay, Fish. Let him chase this. You've slipped your last. Your stealing days are in the past. Ah, uh, Underdog rounded them up like nothing. And we put that slimy, slippery eel into our maximum security prison. The one with the electric fence? That's the one. But Slippery Eel still tried to prove he was the slipperiest. Come on, boys. We're breaking out of here. On us, Eel. That fence is enough to electrocute you. But it's not even turned on now. Yeah, but it may be, Eel, just as you get on it. I'll take my chances. The fence! Slippery Eel's trying to get over the fence! Turn it on! But... but that must have finished him. Ah, it should have. But instead... By a quirk of nature, the fence electrified him. Look! He's... He, he, he's electrified! <laughs> Look at me now, coppers! None of you dare touch me! I'm the electric eel! <laughs> the electricity shot right out of his arm, and it's... It, it's destroying the wall! Now, come on, boys! We're breaking out of here! We're with you, Eel! You'll electrify the world! And as soon as we're out, I'm taking care of that puny underdog! Nothing can stop me now! Ah, that's the story, sweet Polly Purebred! Oh, dear! We must find Underdog and tell him! But Slippery Eel is the electric eel now! I doubt that even the great underdog can stop him. Is Flim Flanagan right?
is the electric eel too powerful for underdog? There's plenty of excitement ahead in our next thrilling episode. For months, the Klondike country had been terrorized by the most notorious of all bandits, Savoir Faire. Savoir Faire has stolen my dinner! He's stolen my bonbons! Uh, he's stolen my cheeses! Savoir, Savoir Faire, Faire is, is everywhere. everywhere! Major Minor, in charge of all the Klondike cops at Fort Frazzle, made a drastic announcement. We must call upon the one Klondike cop who always gets his mouth. Klondike Cat. The governor will be arriving at any moment, Klondike. The governor? Yes, indeed. And I know that the governor's favorite delicacy is cream puffs. Cream puffs? Yes, I want you to walk up to the little Swiss baker on the mountain and buy a dozen cream puffs and have them back here by 12 o'clock sharp. You can count on Klondike Cat. Good. And, oh, yes, watch out for Savoir Faire. If Savoir Faire gets any place near me, I'll make mincemeat out of that mouse. Mm, carry on. You right? One dozen cream puffs, little Swiss baker. These cream puffs are for the governor. Uh, shush, 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 Malamotte. We must not let the clone die cat know we are here. You imagine? The major worrying about savoir faire when I'm on the job. Oh, if that mouse comes around, I'll, yeah, I'll lock him up in irons. I'll hang him up by his heels. He'll never touch one of the governor's cream puffs. Uh, here you are, clone that cat. Twelve beautiful cream puffs. Now I've got to hurry back down the mountain to Fort Frazzle and... Go, go, go! What happened? Savoir Faire is everywhere. You. I'll make mincemeat out of you, mouse. Your yard. I'll. 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 Poor Klondike cat. He cannot move. <laughs> now, we and the cream puffs must be on our way. Mosh, Melimot. Savoir Faire is everywhere. Your yard. I'll, I'll boil him in oil. I'll pound him to a pulp. I'll, I'll make mincemeat out of that mouse. <laughs> Here I come, Savoir Faire. Mm -mm. Oh, it seems the Klondike cat has broken free. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got you, Savoir Faire. I've got you. <laughs> yeah! Somebody get me down. Now, now, prepare, Monsieur Klondike. You've catch the end of the rope, and the wench machine will pull you down. Okay, toss away. I got it. Ah, and so we turn on the wench. What are you doing, Savoir Faire? Happy landings, Klondike Cat. <laughs> ah, and so, Malamotte, let us now prepare for the cream puffs. And so, Malamotte, the first taste. Oh, yes, Governor, I'm sure you like our cream puffs. And Klondike Cat should be bringing them at any moment now. My favorite delicacy. These are especially good cream puffs, Governor, baked by a little Swiss baker on the mountain. I can hardly wait. <laughs> I think I hear Klondike Cat coming now. I say, he's not much of a waiter, is he? Well, now that you mention it, no. But he is the world's greatest mouse trapper. Klondike Cat always gets his mouse. in the forest.
forest grows a tall, tall tree. Uh, of course, it was a short tree, but it uh, grew. And down at the bottom of that tree, there's a little old box that's really the home of Mr. Wizard, the lizard. <laughs> yes? Who is that? It's Tudor the turtle, Mr. Wizard. I got another favor to ask. Come in, come in, my boy. <laughs> Well, Tutor, how is you? Hands up, Mr. Wizard. You're under arrest. Tutor, what is you? No use asking for mercy. Here goes. <laughs> I fooled you, huh, Mr. Wizard? Oh, what a fright, Tutor. Is maybe a clue to what you would like to be? Sure is, Mr. Wizard. I'd like to be one of them real detective fellers. Ah, well, all right, my friend. But be very careful. And call if you need to help. This was the city, Bakersville. Famous for baking the pies. Then one day, many of the pies were stolen. That was the problem. Hot pies. That's my business. Hot goods. My name is Tuesday. Tuesday Turtle. I'm a cop. It was Tuesday, and Tuesday was working the day watch out of the hot foods division. Suddenly, there was the important phone call from the mayor, and quickly, Tuesday was entering the mayor's office. Tuesday Turtle, Bakersville needs your help. We're famous for our crust. Uh, pie crust, that is. Uh, yes, sir. Only now our pies are being stolen. Our best pies. Sort of our upper crust, you might say. Uh, yes, sir. We need some answers, Tuesday. Uh, answers? Well, really, one answer. Why pie? Why not jelly donuts, or hard rolls, or even an occasional pecan ring? Little did they know that the knock on the door would supply part of the answer. I'll get it, Mayor. Yes, this was the beginning of the answer. The pies was being stolen by a mysterious pie thrower. After all, who ever heard of throwing jelly donuts? And very soon, the pies were splatting in the railroad station. Pies were splatting in the bus station. Pies was even splatting in the police station. This time, the Tuesday turtle came up with the clue. Hmm. Raspberry, just like that there other one. And the Tuesday turtle was right. All of the pies was the same flavor. The mysterious pie thrower was giving everyone the raspberry. Quickly, the Tuesday turtle was reporting to the mayor. It's raspberry, all right, Mr. Mayor. Raspberry? Yes, sir. You're not just giving me the berries. No, sir. How can you be sure? Well, no, last time I was here, there was a knock on the door there. I walked over and opened it like this and... Good boy, Tuesday Turtle. What's the flavor? Raspberry, Mr. Mayor. Still raspberry. That settles it. Pick up everyone who has a pie record, especially a raspberry pie record. Well, now, uh, Bunny Goodson's got a shoe fly pie record, and the Andrup sisters got a record, uh, Can You Bake a Pie, Billy Boy? And, no, uh, no, Tuesday. Not that kind of record. A police record. Hmm. It's a new label on me, but I'll get right on it, Mr. Mayor. And soon, the Tuesday Turtle had all of the suspects rounded up for the famous lining up. All right there, number one. You step forward. Okay, Simon, confess. We know you're that there pie thrower. All right, see, all right, I did it. Why, Simon? Uh, why pie? Uh, what you think? I'm plain simple Simon, see? Then I met this pie man, only he never let me taste his wares, see? I turned into a pie hater, that's what. That pie man gave me the raspberry. All right there, Simon. Step down. We're arresting you for the... You're not taking me! This raspberry pie's got a bomb in it, see? Pie a la explode, get it? Hold on, Simon. Give me that there pie. Okay, Tuesday title. Take it! Well, once more, drizzle, 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 drone. Time for this one to come home. Uh, gee, Mr. Wizard, it looks like I made a mess out of things again. <laughs> always, always, I tell you, Tudor, be just what you is, not what you is not. Folks, what you is as the happiest lot.
powerful villain, Electric Eel, had left a strange message for our hero. Ah, uh, sure, and it's a puzzle. A rhyme in time saves nine. Ah, uh, we've got to find Underdog, but the question is, how? I know someone who might be able to help. You mean, humble, lovable? Shoe shine. Shine? Shine? Oh, hello, sweet Polly. Oh, humble, lovable shoe shine. You've got to help us. Of course. Anything I can do in my humble, lovable way. We've got to get a message to Underdog. And since you are his friend, I thought you could help. What seems to be the problem? It's a terrifying new villain. The electric eel. He's left a message for Underdog. What is it? A rhyme in time saves nine. What does it mean? Let's see, a rhyme. That must mean Underdog. He always talks in rhyme. Good, good. But in time, what does that mean? Time, tick tock, watch. Clock. Clock. What's the most famous clock in the world? Big Ben. But that's in London. What's the most famous Ben around here? Why, why Ben's jewelry store. But what has Save Nine got to do with a jewelry store? Nine, nine. There are nine players on a baseball team, and baseball is played on a diamond. That's it. You mean... Of course. Rhyme means underdog, time means Ben's jewelry store, nine means diamonds. So, Slippery Eel is going to rob Ben's jewelry store, and if underdog goes there, he can save the diamonds. Oh, hurry, find underdog. I'm off. <laughs> When diamonds are in danger, I am not slow. It's hip, 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 and away I go! Meanwhile, inside Ben's jewelry store, Slippery Eel is already at work. <laughs> By now, Underdog has figured out my riddle and should be on his way. And when he gets here, he'll walk right into my electric trap. A little electricity won't stop Underdog. A little electricity? A little? Pal, when I throw this switch, a million billion volts go into that trap. Not even Underdog can take that. Hey, Slippery, here he comes now. There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Underdog? It's not for me, I fear. It's the diamonds. He's going to steal the diamonds. I will save your diamonds, Ben, and see that he goes to the pen. Come and get me, underdog. Underdog tried to break through the electrical barrier, but to no avail. <laughs> well, I guess that'll hold him for a while. Now for the diamonds. All right, boys, let's go. And don't any of you citizens touch the switch or... You'll get the shock of your lives. So long, blunted dog. <laughs> Has Underdog really made a blunder? How can he get out of the trap? Don't miss the next electrifying episode.